greetings, lovely, lovely sister lockers or potential natural people who are journeying to uh, whatever you're doing with your hair. You know, this is my passion. I feel like I'm back home. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon and I'm sitting down to fulfill my soul's passion, one of the great soul's passions that I have, which is talking to you all on this channel. I'm talking today about things that you can do to prepare for your install. These are some insights that I have uh, after having had mine and thinking back to some of the things that I wish maybe I had done or looking at some of the things that maybe you can do to help enrich the experience. I am drinking. This cup has my name on it. It was a gift. Tunisia. I wanted to bring this to you guys' attention. I found this about a month ago. It's called Golden Tea. Turmeric infusion. And you know how healthy turmeric is. It's an anti-inflammatory. But it has turmeric in it. It has, of course, the ginger, which is anti-inflammatory. Cinnamon is an immune booster. Black pepper, you already know what that does. It's very good. It helps to move things throughout your body as well as accentuate the positive effects of whatever else you may be taking coconut milk and almond flour it's vegan it's really good and if you're a person who likes a latte or you like a drink that has cream in it this is perfect because i uh, microwave some coconut milk and i add this and it fulfills my need for a breve latte i don't drink coffee i hate coffee but i do like espresso if i'm going to have a hot drink i'll have that once every other week or something but I'm trying to get away from it because of the dairy. So I don't do it as much. That once every other week cycle may come every few months. So anyway, this satiates me. You can get this from your average health store. You can buy it cheaper. I uh, gave the link to a friend that I think I found it on Amazon or somewhere else online. And uh, I think it's $13 or $14 versus the $19 that I paid for it at the store. Again, it's called Jarrow Formulas, J-A-R-R-O-W, Golden Tea Turmeric Infusion with Warming Spices. It's a dietary supplement and it's very healthy. So anyway, I wanted to go over, I think maybe 20, I'm not sure what the number is, but 20 tips of things that you can do before your install. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that you eat well and you take some snacks with you. It keeps down the interruptions. Number two, you wanna make sure that you have all of your devices, anything that you need to Calgon take me away while you're sitting there for 10 hours, 15 hours, if they're breaking it up however long it is. Ooh. I don't know that I have my, nope, don't have the microphone hooked up, but I'm not going to start this video over. I think we will be fine, and you guys will still be able to hear me. Hopefully, you can tell a bit of a difference. Uh, yeah, so, ooh, the volume was down low, too. Ooh, we, we shall see, huh? Ooh. Um, so, first thing, eat, eat well, take snacks. Second thing, take all of the devices that you need with you things that help you go into your happy place while you're sitting there. This is a long time. I took mine, heard it 30 hours to do my locks. I have 500, I had 574. I've separated some since then and done some other little things. So by now I probably had like 585 maybe or something like that. But you're there for a long time. Don't forget an extension cord. You may need, you know, you don't know where, where uh, the, what the facility is like in terms of, of ease of use and you plugging up and the multiple devices and you know things are, are going to be running out of fuel so make sure you have that um then the, the next things are things related to the actual process that you want to keep in mind my suggestion is to bring a gift to your loctician and make sure she gets it before she actually starts locking your hair this does several things number one if you did your research you're going to be satisfied with this person because you're not going to go into this in the first place without uh, liking the person that you're getting ready to spend all this time with. But the other thing is it helps to establish a really good rapport for what is going to be happening throughout the session, which is you asking a lot of questions and feeling comfortable that you're not getting on this person's nerves. But also, y'all know how we are. People of the African diaspora, we are very emotional beings. We we need to have a deep sense of connection. And when we feel connected, we learn better. We, fo we, 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 we experience life better. We are passionate people. So what it does is it helps to set up a healthy rapport. It shows her, number one, that you value the time that she's getting ready 
to put into your hair and you value her as the individual who's going to be the vessel for this new experience you're about to have. This is a huge investment. So it establishes a rapport by showing her that you value her. It also helps you by breaking down any discomforts or any awkward feelings. Because as you're sitting there with that person and as they're doing your hair, especially as I name the other things I want you to do, a person who wasn't in the right mental, emotional space could feel some kind of way. So give her a gift and, and make sure you express you're doing something so important for me. I'm loving the beginning of this journey. I, I looked at a whole lot of people. You're the one that I settled on and I have I have a lot of faith in you and I've seen your work and I just want you to know that whereas this may not be a big deal for other people beyond the superficial, this is really important to me and it's a spiritual connection that we're making. Keep in mind, this is the person whose energy is going into your hair. So you want there to be some positivity there. Number four, um, if you feel something crazy is going on while you're having your locks installed, you have to speak up and speak out about it. It doesn't have to seem crazy because it can be a little nudging or an urging or a question that you may have or a concern you may have. You may uh, uh, feel that, and there are some crazy things that go on. I've heard people using crazy glue to keep the hair from slipping because somebody might have permed ends or a certain texture of hair. That is crazy. But other things could be something as simple as, you know, this is hurting. Like, should this really be hurting? You're pulling kind of tight or they're up here in thin areas of your hair and it just doesn't feel good. It feels painful. And you mentioned it a couple times and it, it, it just doesn't feel like it's making that much of a difference. You have to very strategically and very tactfully and with compassion you have to separate yourself from your emotion, but you do have to be able to speak out on your behalf. And I'm asking you to listen to how you feel. It could be down to the size of your parts. You could be up here in the center of your head and maybe they seem too thick and too big. You know, this is serious stuff, which is why number five, I'm telling you, have a mirror. And I'm not talking about a little compact mirror. Have a nice size mirror that's portable that you take with you that you can hold up and actually look at the install and the process and what is going on. Don't be shy about this. You want to see uh, what's happening with your hair and you want to have a sense of what these things are going to look like. And the reason why I say that is this. These here that turned out really little that I love, that I never had the bunching with and all of that with are totally different than the ones that were in the center of my head. Now, this is one that I took out and separated. You see how thin that is? I would have liked if they were all this way. But, um, and I have gone through and repaired a lot of my locks. This is one of the thicker ones. Trust me, it did not look like this in the beginning. If I could have had my parts up here just a little bit smaller, not a lot, just a little bit, it would have saved me a lot of bunching and a lot of what y'all see me obsess over next to lint. It's the, the chunkiness and the bunching and all these little thick bulbs that end up all, not bulbs, but y'all know what I mean. So have a mirror so that you can actually see what's going on and don't feel shy, guys. This is an investment. And one of the things we do very well is we pay people and then we're not satisfied and we don't know how to speak up. And the issue is not, not really that you don't feel you deserve better. It's that somehow you haven't perfected your level of assertive communication so you or you sense things will get out of control. There's very simple ways to be um, to ask questions and with compassion and to bring things to someone someone's attention in a way that doesn't antagonize them and that's what you have to be able to do you have to master the art of that because as you're working with this person you hear people that have had several opticians on their hair i don't want several people in my hair i want this to be a long lasting relationship now i did cl clearly that doesn't always happen because it can take a few interactions to really tell if you're going to click with someone but your installation is a great place to start and i want you to remember that it's about the communication always be smiling hopefully you're dealing with the kind of individual that you vibed with in the first place i always talk about that if you're dealing with the right kind of individual you're not going to be dealing unless you're somebody that puts up walls and you act ignorant and crazy and you don't know how to communicate if you're that type of person that's the type of person that's going to be working on your hair i'm going to tell you that right now but if you're open if you're reasonable if you communicate with compassion 
that's the type of lactation consultant that more than likely you attracted. And if that's the case, then that person is already poised to want to satisfy you or at least keep the lines of communication open. Again, you want this to be a long term relationship. You don't want to be hopping around. So having this stuff um, uh, as, a, as a part of your mindset going in can, can really, really be helpful. I say tip if you're satisfied. Now, if you've already given a gift at the end of whatever they're doing, maybe you, I'm a person that always tips and I tip 20% no matter what. I don't care where I'm going. I always do that. I feel if someone's hands are on my body, that's a sacred, that's sacred. If someone's feeding me, that's sacred. Whether they view that as sacred or not, it's sacred and it's to be appreciated and not taken for granted. And I also know the secret of giving and receiving in terms of the energetic and spiritual laws. The more you give, the more you receive. And if you want to be abundant and you want to be wealthy, the best thing you can do is give, give, give. Someone would have to really turn my table upside down and put ants in my drink and act crazy in order not to get a tip. They would have to really do something crazy. But for sure, if someone's working on my body, whether it's my masseuse, uh, the chiropractor. Now, I have to be honest, I haven't tipped him because I, I put the fee on the credit card. I don't, I don't really haven't tipped him now that I think about it. Maybe I need to examine that because it's a very inexpensive rate. I don't know why. I'm charged for it automatically. So I need to, I need to examine that. Um, yeah, I do. But I do believe in that. So even though I pay my um, consultant, I always will tip on top of the fee. If you're given a gift already, you may not feel you need to tip, but remember you're giving the gift on the front end. If your service is going over a period of days, you may still want to tip at the end. Um, as you are sitting there with someone, and I think this is five, six, let's see, uh, six, let's say it's six, y'all. I'm counting, I'm keeping an eye on this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see. This is actually seven. Yeah, this is seven. So this is tip seven. Try to stay positive. Try to stay positive. This is really important. People don't always think about this. Um, you made an investment in this person. There can be some things that can happen throughout the session. You're spending a very lengthy, intimate amount of time with this individual. So you're going to see things, you're going to observe things, do your best not to be judgmental and look at it in the best light possible, giving that person the benefit of the doubt before you begin to judge them. I am telling you, these things are communicated energetically. It will complicate the situation. Give the person a benefit of the doubt and stay as positive as you possibly can throughout the entire process. People don't look at this stuff. They think about, you know, all the outward, external, tangible, material type stuff. This is an energy exchange. Be as positive and don't be judgmental. Now, I'm saying that before I go into point number eight which may seem to have a hint of that in it, but I want you to balance it. Observe how that person does business. When you spend that kind of time with, some individ with an individual during the day, you're gonna see they'll get text messages, they'll get phone calls. You need to be attuned to how they conduct their business affairs as it relates to you getting your hair done. Why? Because you have to make informed decisions. Too many interruptions, are gonna cost you time. It means you'll never get finished on time. It means that they'll set a certain time, but they'll fall far off that time. If you like the person enough, you'll keep going because that's not an issue for you, but at least to be forewarned is to be forearmed, right? So you wanna keep an eye on that. Are they the type of person that goes in the kitchen and makes a meal or eats some fried chicken and then wants to come back and do your hair? How professional are they? Do they recognize that although we have a good rapport, there's a thin line between the rapport that we need to maintain and the one that actually um, allows us to get closer and to get to really know each other. Fundamentally, whenever there's a monetary exchange, there's a possibility for something to be complicated. So you want to really keep an eye on that. And also it shows you the level of professionalism. You don't want somebody uh, Instagramming or, or texting or, or, or reading or doing other things while 
they're doing your hair and they need to be focused. Mistakes happen when we are not minding the steering wheel. So this is really important. Keep that in mind. And take it seriously. Because it, you could be in a situation where you had a choice of several or few lacticians. None of them did you like that much, but you feel like you chose this person for their skill level. So maybe they're just the person you want to install your locks. Maybe you have a plan to have someone else to maintain them. I don't know. So maybe that's not as big a deal to you. But you have the opportunity to observe during your sessions. When you get there, is somebody else still getting their hair done? Or did they set the time right, got the time right? If they told you four and a half hours, did it take six hours? Did it take three hours? These are the things that make a difference. So take that into consideration. Take a pillow. It depending upon how you're sitting. You may need one here. You may need to sit on one just to have one for comfort. Some people may even take a blanket only because the temperature exchanges. People have different needs. So you want to plan ahead in terms of the comfort level that you want to have now. For me, I think it's important to have your hair clean before you go and to make sure that in the weeks preceding your install that you've been doing a lot of scalp work. You already know the complaints people have about dry scalp, itching. Whenever you're pulling on your hair, there's going to be some tenderness. Make sure your hair is super clean. Make sure it's already detangled. You've combed through it. You've conditioned it. All of that stuff, unless the lactician tells you not to condition it, which I don't see is going to be an issue prior to the um, install as long as your hair is clean and it's not something that's laden with, with oils that are going to remain in your hair. Have your scalp massaged and I would suggest some essential oil treatment prior to actually getting your locks installed. You want your, your scalp in the best possible situation. Also, you have to determine whether or not you're going to put oil in your hair based on what your lactician says or does not say. I never had one bit of itching with my locks, but my lactician put oil in my hair the very first day. So it varies, everybody. Uh, I'm saying also in, in, in saying that, uh, and this is number 12, I think in saying that, make sure that you take your own oil blend with you. Because if you have a lactician who doesn't mind using a little bit of oil, it needs to be the kind of oil that you would use. Uh, I had that Talia Wajit stuff um, put in my hair and I wish that I hadn't, but it took me a long time to realize that that stuff was problematic. If I had to do it all over again, I would take my Miracle Oil Blend, the one that I've been using for eight years that I attribute to the growth and, and health of my hair. I would take that as the first thing that I christen my hair with. So have something just in case if you have one of those consultants that doesn't mind using a little bit of oil or they recognize the varying needs of, of, of people's hair, then you, you'll probably wish that you'll be glad that you had something with you. Next, um, don't forget your starter kit. Now, I, it's been a long time. I think I remember ordering my own shampoo. I don't remember being given a starter kit um, from my consultant, but I also don't remember having a free follow-up the first time either. Um, God forgive me if I'm wrong, but I remember paying for my first retightening, and I think I ordered my, my starter lock shampoo online or the starter kit online. I could be wrong, but I just don't remember that being impressed upon me. And I remember when I heard about some of your experiences when I started the channel, I thought, oh, wow, they got a free retightening. Oh, okay, they got the starter kit. So either way, make sure before you leave, word is that you should get a starter kit along with the payment for your first install. Of course, that can vary depending upon the ingredient and the experience that you had, the conversation with your lactician consultant. But don't forget that. Take pictures. Take pictures. Take pictures throughout the journey, but take pictures when you are done. Take pictures. Uh, if it's split up into a few days, take pictures. You never know why you may want to go back and take a look at something. Take pictures. Get that person 
who's standing over you or when you get home, your kids or your hubby or whatever, to take some pictures at different angles. It can be very useful. Um, have a clear idea of the starting and the finishing times going in. This can be very important for a lot of logistical reasons. It also can help you get an idea of how this person manages their time and how close their timing estimates are. And this can give clues as to their level of experience. Hopefully they've already examined your hair. They've taken a look at the density and they were able to give you some range of time that it may take. But this can also help you um, as you as you begin to start doing uh, retightenings with this with this individual. So that's really important. And it's also important because if you have somebody who works very slow and they're getting distracted because they're talking, then you know that you're going to need to allow more time. I have two consultants and they work kind of differently. One actually sections off my hair when she does it. And then after she finishes a, a section, she plaits it up and it has an effect because when she takes my hair out, it lays differently and it, it, it's just not as tangled. The, and she actually strokes it and grooms it as she's doing it, going through the process. My hair feels different and it lays different after a, a, um, a session. My other one is a little more creative and, and that's the difference in their personality. That she's more creative. And so um, she just starts in an area and just moves around. And she may start here, then she may come here, then she may go there. So um, th there are some differences there. And those sessions tend to be more varied in the length of time. But because we vibe so well and because of the spiritual exchange, I don't mind if I'm there for four and a half, five hours. I still am paying the same fee or it has been for the last few years. So that's fine to me because I'm there uh, for my hair, but I'm also there because of a connection and I'm willing to allow that freedom and creativity. So it doesn't bother me. But you wanna take those things into consideration. Uh, also, you wanna make sure that you know your pattern. You wanna make sure that you know your pattern, whether it's reverse four, whether it's pattern three, know your pattern and understand the whys of why your loctician chose that pattern. And I'm not talking about just the obvious textbook reason that they were trained to choose that. What is it about your hair that made her choose that pattern? What does she think the outcome is going to be with your hair by choosing that pattern? And that's important. I've had a lot of people say like, when I look at how my hair wiggled out and the texture of my hair and how I had a messy, messy problem with the bunching and all of that, that really drove me crazy. And I, I, I promise you, my hair would not be like this if I didn't go through over the course of these seven years, eight years, almost every lock, except the ones in here that were very little uh, and a few here, but these were some of the worst at the back. I can't tell you how, um, if my hair wasn't in the tightest pattern, I might have had a problem. But then again, you have to wonder if certain areas of your hair don't function in a certain pattern better in other areas in another pattern. That tightness up in here, for some people, could be a reason why it is constantly trying to get out because there's not enough room and the pattern is too tight. But then again, if I had a pattern three as thick as my hair already is, there's no telling. I mean, it's dropped now in the last couple years, so it doesn't seem as thick, but it might have even been like this. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but my locks would have been thicker looking too, and I, I'm not too crazy about that. So understand the pattern. Is she giving you a certain pattern because your hair is thin and she wants to give you the benefit of extra thickening? Is she giving you the pattern because of the grade of your hair, the density? What is it specifically that she thinks will be the outcome? That's what's key. All right. Um, the sizes of your locks and, and, and the positioning of where the different sizes will, will kind of where they make the adjustment for the different sizes. That's important. You want to know, are you doing small, medium, large you're doing micro small medium like and what is your large like what's your largest size you want to know the size of your locks if you're somebody who wish would love to have them all this size all over and you know that the sister lock brand um is mostly about 
having you know smaller in here and then larger up here maybe maybe that's okay depending upon what's large and what's large on your density and how big is that going to make your lock look you could still have 600 50 locks, 700 locks, and they still be too large depending upon your unique requirements. So you want to get a feel for that. If I didn't know anything about the sizes when I when I got my locks. Um, I know that my girlfriend, as I mentioned, had them all super small. And as a result, I think that impacted her as she went through her journey. But at the same time, there's some in here that she ended up separating from me for me uh, within those first retightenings re because they were just too big. And when I look at the ones that are still big now, I know that I could have had a little, uh, I probably had a little more, a little more room in there. Um, and she may have accommodated a request, you know, to have a whole section a little smaller so know the sizes and where to expect the changes in the sizes and when they start doing the bigger ones if you know you like smaller locks when they start doing the bigger ones have that mirror and go in the bathroom for your little bathroom break and get a feel for how thick that section is and know that it's going to expand two three times the size of that all right and even though it may compress it ain't going to compress no time soon it's going to take some years to compress so they're going to be in looking thicker so you want to keep that in mind as well um, this is always the time to express your concerns. If you have concerns about the size, the pattern, you don't understand the whys of certain things, whatever it is, when it gets up into these areas here where the hair is uneven, depending upon what your crown and edges look like, it's not always in a grid pattern. There are certain, I shouldn't say it's not in a grid pattern. There are certain discretions that the loctician consultant can use and that can affect the way it looks so you need to be paying attention if you know you got a big Adams peak right here or you have you know just some irregularities in your in your hairline and your edges and you want to just be aware of that as I mentioned know that the locks are going to swell they're going to swell a lot so if they're bigger than what you think they should be you need to say something at the outset don't let somebody tell you oh we'll straighten that out if they start to develop over the next four or five retightenings or the next four or five months we can straighten that out as we go i can always go back and separate them mm -mm. can we just do it now i just really have a feeling about this i know i know i'm going to want it a little smaller do you mind if we go in and just take care of that now i would love that that way they'll all be maturing at the same rate i wouldn't want you know us to have to start over or you to have to do that extra step if you don't mind I would oh I would be so happy if, if we could do that I would leave out of here feeling fully fully you know gratified or whatever uh let me see uh, when you leave your lactation do exactly what they tell you to do between the time you leave and the time you come back for the next appointment or two. You can't have any excuses for why certain things didn't go a certain way if you didn't listen. And some locticians will charge you or they don't take kindly to you using your discretion to change what it is they told you. And I'm all about being a rebel. But in the beginning, while you're establishing a rapport with your loctician, do what they tell you to do. If she says don't wash your hair for three weeks, don't wash your hair for three weeks. If she says don't manipulate these, I don't care how many YouTube videos you see of people with locks, with short locks, who are rolling them up and doing all this other stuff, handling and manipulating their hair, don't do it. If she tells you to, these people know hair, they know this is their business, this is their, their, their passion, they know what to expect in your hair between your visits and not only that it shows that you respect and will follow through on the things that will either make their job easier or harder so you really want to be um clear on that the, um Last but not least, and this is number 20, I believe, you, um, you want to make sure that you've asked the questions or you all have had the conversation about what to do in the event of. If I have slippage, and a lot of these slip, 
am I going to be charged if, and this is what you say, if I've done what you told me to do and the hair just slipped out, will this be a part of the retightening? as long as I've done what you've asked me to do. You don't want to have a lot of slippage and then go in there and then be charged the extra $25 or $50 because of slippage. That's going to impede the relationship. But at the same time, if 50 locks have slipped, what do you expect, right? If it's your fault or not, <laughs> that's, that's going to take some time to repair. So you want to have that conversation about Hopefully you've had that before you chose the person, but you want to know when you leave, the next time I come back, what are some challenges that I might experience between now and then? If I have a little slippage and it's not excessive, is that something that will be a part of the retightening session fee? That whole thing you want to be really aware of. Um, I hope that I, I covered uh, some things that were useful to you and I hope that you benefited from this video if you are early early in your lock journey or if you are considering locks. You're with Tunisia Ali of Tunisia's Locks Beauty Tips and Potpourri and I hope that you found the video useful. Please if there are other things that you find that were useful in your journey that you did or if you're having them installed then there's some things that you think I left off the list that you wish someone may have told you or you think others can benefit from, please leave something in the comment section and uh, I will revise this video or come up with another one to add some of those things if there's enough uh, feedback. Thank you so much.